All right, so it's a beautiful day here in Pacifica. Uh, this spot is known as Boat Docks. I surf out here a lot, but anyway, um, I love this spot and I wanna do something with the scene that's behind me. Uh, so let me show you what I'm thinking. All right, so I like this shadow right here and I'm thinking of doing something maybe like this. Um, you know, so having part of the dock here in the foreground uh, and then there's like mid-ground docks and then these distant hills. So yeah, something maybe like this. Got the Anderson easel as usual, usual palette of colors. Uh, Liquin as my medium. And I'm working on an 18 by 24 inch stretch canvas. And I actually have a piece of cardboard on the back so that it doesn't get backlit. Uh, it can be really distracting to have sunlight coming through your, uh, your canvas. Right, so I have toned in burnt sienna as usual. And one thing I didn't mention is I actually take my canvas bag that I carry my palette in and I kind of sand down the canvas before, um, before painting on it. Because oftentimes these sort of, you know, factory canvases or whatever, um, they're a little bit rough, you know, there's like some sort of nap on it. So the first step was to get the big shapes in the right place and then, you know, I can come in and be a little bit more specific. Um, you know, I've got this post right here is right here. And then uh, this portion of dock uh, is this right here. Once I have those in, then I can use, uh, you know, use those shapes to determine where the other shapes go and then start adding a bit more detail. Although, you know, my sketch uh, it's just more or less a map, you know, and the next step after this, after I get this kind of figured out is I'll just look, I'll squint and I'll look for where the shadows are and lay in the shadows on top of this, uh, this sketch. And then that will give this a lot more structure. All right, so I'm going to start mapping out the darks and I've got a mixture of ultramarine, uh, alizarin crimson, a little bit of liquid, and uh, I've also thinned with some mineral spirits. And I'm squinting at the scene. I'm looking for the darkest darks at this point. Just gonna, uh, like I said, kind of map out the darkest darks. Okay, so this is more or less the shadow pattern. And I always feel like if I have like a nice light and dark structure, um, you know, then I can start uh, coming in and filling in more accurate uh, colors and values. Uh, but so far I'm feeling like the composition is working. So I think I'm gonna work on the sky next. Um, and at this point, I'm just gonna block in approximate colors um, just to, f you know, cover the whole canvas. All right, for the sky, I'm using titanium white, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of phthalo blue. And I'm thinning with liquid. I use the sky to carve out, you know, the shapes of like, say, this little building or this tree or whatever. And also, too, I want to show you, see where this building is here? 
uh, that building corresponds to. I think it's right there. So I've eliminated, you know, the background um, because I feel like, you know, the tree and the top of the road and all this is very interesting. Uh, and I like those shapes, so I'm gonna leave out the background hills. All right, so next I'm mixing a color for the water. Uh, and I'm keeping an eye on the white water here too so I can uh, mix uh, the appropriate value. All right, so I'm going with a mixture of titanium white, uh, ultramarine blue, a bit of phthalo blue, and some cadmium yellow medium. Uh, mixed in some liquid as well. And you can see the value of the water here uh, compared to you know the white, which will be the white water. Okay, so for the sand, I'm going with a mixture of uh, yellow ochre, titanium white, a little bit of cadmium yellow medium, and graying it down slightly with some dioxazine purple. I'm gonna paint the sand a little bit warmer than I'm actually seeing it, because uh, I wanna make sure that, you know, I've got a nice feeling of light in the painting. All right, so there is more or less the rough in. The light is changing a bit, but not much, which is great. The next step is just uh, going to be, you know, looking for uh, shifts of color and value within the shadow shapes and within the light shapes. But I, I want to be sure not to break up the overall design here. Really important, because I like the overall light and dark pattern. I'm planning to go back and do this composition again. This was a really fun exercise because it's just so much information. Um, and I really had to focus on simplifying. To be honest, this, this large canvas or large-ish canvas, 18 by 24, you know, didn't feel too big at all. The biggest challenge was just getting everything mapped out and then trying to, you know, create some sort of design out of the clutter. As I did with the last painting of those of the cypress trees on the cliff, I focused on an interesting shadow pattern and then started, you know, looking for shifts in color and temperature within the shadows and being very conscious not to break up that pattern as I added those colors and shifts in temperature. Let's see what else. I do think that, you know, removing the, the hill behind here was a good call because I really like the shape of the sky here and how like it makes the trees stand out and everything. So I think it took me about three hours to do this painting, uh, which is a little longer than usual. And um, it wasn't because of the size of the canvas. It was more uh, just because of the complexity of the scene. I did spend quite a bit of time before I started uh, just sort of mentally going through the process, you know, or, or, you know, kind of coming up with a mental game plan as to how I was going to tackle, you know, this complicated scene, how I was going to simplify it. And, um, and then also, you know, walked around and looked at several different potential compositions. I like the idea of having a strong foreground, middle ground and distance. So I like the idea of putting that one post 
on of the of the dock up close uh in the you know in the picture and then um and then also you know i was really attracted to that interesting shadow shape so anyway i spent a lot of time with that and then kind of mentally going through the process of you know trying to foresee any sort of challenges um, that might come up there's always going to be things you can't predict but i feel like if you think through the process uh carefully you know i mean only spend a few minutes maybe even five minutes just kind of mentally putting together a game plan i think it can be really helpful uh, so anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos, I've got a Patreon link down below. I've got a bunch of extra videos on there and materials list, that sort of thing. And it really does help support the channel. It keeps me making these videos. Um, so if that sounds interesting, check it out. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video.